And All right. Fly. Again. A warm welcome to our talk, Plot Twist, adding interactivity to the elegance of Digibot 2 with Giraffe. I'm Cedric Scherer, and I'm presenting here at User 2025 to Ken together with Tanya Shapiro. Hi, Tanya. How are you doing? Hey, Cedric. I'm excited to be here today with you presenting at UserCon. Uh, before we dive into Giraffe, a little bit about us. I started off in the insurance world doing a number of different data things, data analyst, data product manager, data engineer. And today I'm actually a founder of my own company, Indie Visual, and I help clients with data visualization design problems and also data strategy. Wow, a founder, so cool. I'm a trained life scientist and graduated in computational ecology and while coding, um, mostly R, I fell in love with data visualization and then became an independent designer consultant educator in 2020 and giving workshops and helping uh, my clients to create meaningful, effective data visualizations. And what we both have in common is that many of the data visualizations we create, we are creating with the R package ggplot2. And ggplot2 is so wonderful, we want, just want to share why we think it's the best way. Well, I could spend this entire talk talking about how much we love ggplot2. But for the sake of time, I'm gonna keep it really simple. You can build beautiful and elegant plots. Uh, it's intuitive through the grammar of graphics, which offers a layered approach of building and styling plots. And on top of it being so simple, it's almost like a piece of cake. It's also super flexible. Yeah, and offers so much flexibility. And on top, the open, open source community offers so many more additional extension packages to create other chart types, to add colors or other features to your plot. And speaking of community, there's so many resources from the community, videos, blog posts, even freely available books. In fact, there's the Tidy Tuesday community, which is specific to creating data visualization with R and even Python, I think, these days. But the origin story of our friendship actually begins with Tidy Tuesday. Three years ago, I met Cedric online and I was inspired by his ggplot so much that I had to try out the package for myself. Along the way, I've made a lot of friends through this community, including the wonderful Allison Horst, whose artwork is displayed here on this very slide. Yeah, wonderful work by Allison. Love it. Um, and Tidy Tuesday is also wonderful. So people share a lot of codes to create static plots with ggplot2, but sometimes static is just not enough. So what are reasons to go interactive? Well, there are many of them, but mostly it's static plots can tell a story if they are designed nicely and effectively, but interactive plots invite people to explore the story and the underlying data. So you can give more information to people and make them more curious and engage longer with your charts. So here's a basic example. Um, it's showing bike share data and it's annotated clearly, so it would work as a static image itself as well. But by hovering over the points, we get additional information and even the day and night periods are linked here. So I can compare them and get the number of bikes rented and the temperature on that date. Wow, and that's so cool. Yeah, thanks, Tanya. Um, and I know you're using high-level stuff as well. And there's the question where to start, right? If you're an R coder, and I'm definitely that person, I don't want to dip my toes into JavaScript and D3 that much because it's a very steep learning curve and I just don't have the capacities to do that. And why I love low-code, no-code tools like Data Wrapper or other online, online browser um, approaches, frameworks, um, they are often very limited. So I feel like constrained as a ggplot user. So wouldn't it be great if there's another solution? Well, I'm glad you asked because there is something that is the right fit for our users, especially ggplot lovers like us. Enter in the giraffe package. So if you know ggplot2, you already know giraffe. This is going to be a cakewalk. Uh, so a little bit about giraffe. There's actually... 50 interactive geoms that you can use with the package. And just to give you an idea of how easy and familiar it looks, here's a one-to-one -one conversion from the geoms. All you're really doing is adding underscore interactive to create an interactive layer. There's a few things that we're gonna walk you through on how to tweak the recipe a little bit, but for the most part, you're almost 90% of the way there. On top of that, you can either use it as a standalone HTML widget or if you're using a, the broader R universe, you can embed it in Quarto, just like the slide deck that we're presenting today, <laughs> or Markdown, or even Shiny. Yeah, so it looks really simple. And we want to now sh share a few examples along the way. 
So the first section is going to be um, showing you how to create tooltips. So first of all, setting up tooltips with GRAF. It's, as mentioned, the same geom function just with an interactive. So looking at that code here, we have the geom tile interactive to create a heat map, which I will show you in a second. And there are two new aesthetics you can pass here in line three. It's the tooltip where we pass a column to be shown for each data value and the ID to control the highlighting. And then we pass that object, which we have stored in the well describing name P here as the GG object to the giraffe function. And then there's some flexibility already for customization. So you can, for example, uh, set the opacity and use a colored fill for your tooltips or even pass CSS. Here's a simple CSS bit in line 14 where we change the color of the text and add a bit of padding around it. How does it look like? So here is the heat map on the Simpsons data. And now if I go over that, I get the title, which I have passed to the tooltip aesthetic. But you can do much more. So um, as seen in the other example, sometimes it's nicer to provide more information. So for here, for example, I added the season and the episode, then the title in a larger and bold font, and below that, the actual IMDB rating so people can really quantify it, not just by color. So how would we do that? Actually, that's not magic to giraffe, but because it's using CSS styling to create those tooltips, we can create um, a column in our data set with the regular mutate. And here I'm putting together or pasting together many things. So the, uh, the styling with the CSS, then together with some information, which I just created on the fly, like the text color or the web title and the season episode and rating information. And then you just pass that new object as before, now with the new column tool to text to the giraffe function, and it looks like on the slide before. So you see there are a few other options here, the hover options, and this is what Tanya is now going to talk about. Thanks, Cedric. Wow, it's really that easy. You're just adding two more ingredients to your geom, and lo and behold, you have a tooltip that shows you so much more. So getting into hovering, one of the nice styling tricks about interactive data viz is calling attention to something. And we can do that with some hovering and highlighting tricks here in the giraffe package. So I had to go back to one of the initial Tidy Tuesday plots I did, which was inspired by Cedric's lollipop jitter plot. Uh, I'm a Doctor Who fan. This was a cool data set that we used for Tidy Tuesday. And I thought it would be a great example to show how we could make it interactive. So here you see the, ep the episode ratings by doctor. You've got the little points that represent each episode. But if you're curious like me, you might wanna know which episode had the highest rating. So if I'm hovering over David Tennant, I've got the tooltip, as Cedric mentioned, it's a little bit of HTML and CSS magic, but here we're also highlighting this point to make it intuitive for users to know that the tooltip corresponds to this point. So. I'm gonna give you a quick little code walkthrough of how we can apply this styling. So here we've got our interactive geom, the, uh, the jitter interactive geom. You can see in the mapping, similar to what, how Cedric pointed out, you're creating the tooltip with an AES. The data ID is unique to a story number. In this case, think of it like the episode ID. And then what I'm gonna be showing you in the next part is when we're passing this GG, uh, ggplot as the object within the giraffe function, under options, the only thing that we're gonna be tweaking is this opts hover function where we can throw in a little bit of CSS. A little bit of, little tip here on CSS, we're actually styling an SVG object. So if you're familiar with SVGs, you'll be adapting fill here and stroke instead of background color or border color, because this will help us style the, the individual points. And it's really just one line of code here to change that one dot when you're hovering over things. But what if we wanna get a little bit more advanced with highlighting? So we saw how you could call out one point. Another nice styling effect to draw attention to something is inverting a highlight. So by muting the colors of the other points, we're really drawing attention and focus to a group or to a single point. Here, I've given you an example of how you can not only hover over one element, but you can actually hover over a group and call attention to it. You can also link interactive hovering across different geoms. In this example, if we hover over Christopher Eccleston, you can see the name highlights in red as, a lot, as well as the points, and then all of the other points gray out. So you might be wondering, how do we do this kind of cool styling? 
I'm going to show you a quick code tutorial. So similar to the other plot, we've mapped our data IDs this time. It's going to be to the doctor because it's a group of elements instead of the episode number. But if we want to introduce some inverse hovering, there's another function in Giraffe called opts hover inverse where we can pass in CSS stylings. Another cool note, I needed to use this for the, the magic trick today. If you want to be more bespoke about what you're calling attention to with your CSS highlighting, there's also a function called Giraffe CSS where you can either call attention to points, in this case, your circle SVGs, or text. So here, we're not really doing any trick on the opts hover. It's all going to be on opts hover inverse. So minimal styling, things like this can help you elevate your plot. Another creative use case with Giraffe might be, drum roll, could be crosshairs. So here, if you wanted to do a trick with crosshairs on line charts, in theory, you could do inverse hovering to hide things. I'm not going to show you all of the tips and tricks here in this talk, but feel free to check out the repo afterwards. That's so cool. Really curious about that one. Um, another thing which is well documented, but we definitely need to cover it here is the um, opportunity to combine plots or highlight data across different subplots. So here's an example from, from the Uncharted course we have, where it's a bubble chart and a map together with as, made with SF. And we use the patchwork package to stick these two plots together. And if I go over one of the plots, it will highlight on the others. So I can do it vice versa on the map as well. And how we do that, it's actually very, very simple. Um, as mentioned, we will use the patchwork package, but first we need to create the single plots. So here we create a plot of it, the bubble chart and the map of it, which is the obviously the map. And they share the same data and they also share the same tooltip and data ID. And then we simply combine it with the patchwork magic and the same works for facets as well. So if you hover over one of the facets, you will see the groups highlighted along all of these. And then we just simply pass that to the giraffe function and it just works. How wonderful is that? Wow, that's super cool. Not only can you do it on one plot, but you could always do it on many. Uh, speaking of interactivity across plots, another use case might be for Shiny application development. You can create your HTML widget within the application to do some interactive click events. So I'm going to show on the next slide a quick example. Of course, who doesn't love a good iframe in a presentation? So for the sake of the presentation here, here we have a basic Shiny application showing sales data. On the left-hand side, we've got our bar chart. If you click on something, you can actually create a click event that creates an input, and then you can subset data based on this input, be it a table or be it value outputs like the top. So there's a lot more that you could do. Won't be sharing the code on this talk because of time, but it's all available to you in the repo if you want to see how to do it. Yeah, wonderful dashboard. And I can assume it's a lot of code to walk through. So maybe in a workshop or some other opportunity. And yeah, that's it with the showcase. We thank you very much for your interest. Um, Tanya, what if people want to learn more? Well, you could either check out our repository. We've put together a quick cookbook for you on how to do these plots. So if you want to check out the behind the scenes code, please feel free to go directly to the repo link. Also highly recommend checking out the giraffe book by David Goel, who is the package developer. There's a lot of cool tips and tricks and a little bit more about all of the functions that you can find. Yeah, many, many thanks to David for setting this package up and also for the continued help and the documentation. It's really be a fun ride trying out different things with that and stressing it how much we can do with it. And if this is interesting, Giraffe or GGBot alone, um, or you have a collaboration in mind or a project going on, we are always open for consulting and training, so feel free to reach out. Speaking of workshops, Cedric, don't you have something cool going on right now? Oh, yeah. If you don't want me to be in-house or um, um, being re connected remotely, but do it on your own pacing, I currently have a project going on, which we call ggplot2 Uncharted, together with Jan Holtz, whom you may know from the Rgraph Gallery or from data to this And we currently have uh, early supporter prices, so feel free to check it out. We will also cover a bit of interactivity there. So thanks again for listening, and thanks, Tanya, for joining here. And... Yeah, all the best for the rest of the conference, right? Thank you all. I hope you've been inspired today. I highly encourage you all to, to check out Giraffe Package and please share your work with us. 
Thanks again. Bye-bye.